Also, I have my get it up there. I have my hemp shoes on. Anyway, African uh, patent pants. Uh, they're a gift from uh, my fraternity brothers, uh, Professor James Kanye, who's uh, teaches at Keene University. He's the head of the you know African American Studies, whatever his department. There, he also teaches at uh, Baker Evers in Brooklyn. Anyway, he gave me these pants, and I wear it last time. Oh, look at this. This is. A classic map of Africa before the colonies, you know, before that conference in uh, Berlin or wherever it was, or wherever it was, where, where it was, where they carved up Africa, and carved a bunch of other stuff. So, I'm, and I get this this hat, this sky here looks Nigerian, but it was made by my my wife. She's a designer, and uh, oh Lord, I'm gonna deal with these flies again. Anyway, um, she's a designer. And she's African, so it's actually African hat, but it's not from Nigeria. And that here. Um, so I'm in a pan African, you know, look. Um, I'm gonna, this might be a little while. And two, two, I'm gonna do two separate things. Uh, we have the um, ADOS movement, okay. Now I'm gonna say something that precurses the ADS movement. Let's call it, uh, you know, the pan African, my pan African consciousness. Well, it's not really. And then I'm gonna do after where I think ADS could be going afterwards, okay? I'm not gonna deal with what's happening right now. Everybody else has something to say. <coughs> okay, so let's start. Um, let's start with, um, these, are, these are interesting examples of what's happening even now. Um, I'm gonna take you back, where's my thing? Um, in the early 70s, right after I got out of the Air Force, I was going back to school. I had taken some extension courses and uh, from uh, um, Trenton State. Uh, they were right outside. We didn't, we didn't have to go for that. Anyway, Trenton State University. Trenton State, State College. And I knew, uh, this is while I was in the Air Force. Anyway, I'll skip. So when I got out of there, I had to find this document. Hopefully it's here. Um, our certificate. Uh, so I went to the school. Anyway, when I went, when I was sitting, it's before I got out of the Air Force. It's like in December or November of, uh, uh, when did I get out of the Air Force? 1970, yeah. So, uh, not 1974, so 1973. Somewhere in there. Oh, here it is. And I was outside the admissions office because you know, I had to have a pre interview. I wasn't going to accept my stuff like that. And there was this swinging door. And I heard all the, all the voices. I'm sitting there patiently. You know, the voice, this black voice, obviously, he says, you don't know, you don't know me. I'll burn this mother down. I'm well, like, listen through the door, say, ooh, that's interesting. Maybe I'm in the right place. <laughs> so what happened on the other side of the one of swinging doors, he, this guy, the, the black guy, he was yelling at the dean of the school. They had just been appointed dean, Emmanuel Mescalin, because the year before, when the, 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 the Rutgers student, had, uh, because this Livingston College is part of Rutgers, See, Rutgers State University, just a copy of my uh, degree. Livingston College, okay? Um, got a B something, or BA, and whatever, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm a graduate. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> that year before, we had uh, the, the Rutgers basketball team was really good. It had a guy named uh, Sellers, Phil, Phil Sellers on it. He was a star forward, something like that. Um, but the, the students had run, run onto the court and uh, disrupted the game. And I think, well, I can't get it, disrupted the game. I haven't been there. So, anyway, so this guy was saying, like, you haven't met our demands that we had done that past semester, and you better get on it, right? But this guy, Emmanuel Mestling, this, this so called dean, um, he had come from the Rand Corporation. Now, let's stop right there. I'm going to tell you something about Livingston College. Wait, wait. And I think his mission, well, we know his mission, was to dismantle the school. Now, you have to understand, Rutgers is a state university, have branches of Northern Newark, uh, New Brunswick, and at the time, I think it had something in Trenton. But the New Brunswick campuses, you had Douglas College, which was the uh, women's college, the women, you know, like that. You had um, uh, uh, 
on Mason Grove. Uh, there's a uh, Catholic graduate school over there, Mason Grove School of the Arts. It changed to Mason Grove School of the Arts when I first went to. It was, a, it was some some other name. Then you had on. Then you had over in that's that was in the New Brunswick side. Then you had Rutgers, you know, proper the main camp. Well, Rutgers College. Um, in New Brunswick. Then over the whatever, uh, over the river, you had Pis in Piscataway, you had Cook College, which was a, it's like farming agricultural college. But then where's the medicine? Uh, medicine College was someplace else. I think that was there too. And then you had Livingston College. Now, what was important about Livingston College? At the time, I, it was a response to what all the, up, the, uh, the uh, urban upheavals, whatever they want to call it. Livingston College was like, think of like what Berkeley was over there and what, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, Stony Brook, one of old Westbury, whatever it is, that was another radical college. And the premise was this: what they did was um, basically they didn't want us, they didn't want us to be into like what the Ivy League, proper Ivy League college. So they created this situation where you know they could take. Look, they recruited black students, inner city, whatever you want to call students. Remember, this is the early, this is the early 70s. They recruited them. I mean, they literally went into the pool halls of Newark to get students potential students. I, I forgot how it came by, but anyway, I, I learned about it and I didn't even learn about that. It was just just on the radar for me and like that. But what's interesting about Livingston College, the mean age for us, now you know when you go to college now, the mean age of student might be like 20, 21, like that, you know, you go to college 18. The mean age for the students at Livingston College was 25. Okay, so when I was there, I was just 23, 23 and a half, whatever, 23, whatever age I was. No, it's, yeah, 74, I don't know what age I was, I was some age. Um, so, so, so therefore the, the student body was, was, a, a, was a higher age. Now here's the really interesting, think of Livingston College as an HBCU, a historically black college. When I say that, I don't mean it was, a, you know, it really means that those values of HBCU, like we had Greek fraternities, we had all kinds of things, you know, it, we had, like, like say the housing, we had three quads, quads one, two, and three. And then you had the towers, where the living spaces are. Quad one, we call Woodstock, because there's a lot of white people, radical people, you know, the streakers, the, the, the radical people, the radical white boys, white, white boys, white, radical, radical white people were in quad one. Quad two was sort of mixed, you know what I mean? And plus they had like the, uh, I think it was Abiso Campos, or Puerto Rican house, and they also had the Malcolm X house. So those houses in the, in the quads were like all black and one all Puerto Rican, okay? Then on quad three, it's all black. I was in quad three, of course. <clears throat> then you had these tunnels. I won't get into that. Shh, shh. Anyway, so <sighs> mango juice mixed with lychee. I like it. Um, so, so that's the way it, it was set up. And and like I said, it was a very radical college. Um, we're, we're in the location now, so if you hear some sounds, it's just because we're Saturday morning and people, you know, you know location means we're in, um, in Alice, uh, which is in the eastern capus of uh, Southern Africa or South Africa. Okay. Okay, so that was the situation. Now, in the time that I was there, from the time that guy was cursing out the dean, and by the time I was uh, leaving, basically, basically, oh, that's like I got 74, 74, in 76 when I got my degree, because I had a lot of credits and whatever. And that's me, merely two years. We can see you can see where they were dismantling the college. And here's what's unique about the college: we had even the professors didn't necessarily have to have like degrees or whatever have you. But we had the most extraordinary, extraordinary like A. B. Spellman was. I'm in the English department. We had A. B. Spellman, um, uh, um, um, uh, you know, uh, the sister that. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm Mr. Uh, Nobel Prize. Um, Oh gosh, why am I blanking? Uh, Nobel Prize, uh, beloved, you know, um, the bluest eye, I'm Toni Morrison. Let me study Toni And she was teaching at the college. We had people like um, uh, Hattie Gossett uh, in the English department, uh, Pep, my favorite teacher, Pepsi Charles. You know, I love Pepsi. Peace and blessings on her eternal soul. Pepsi was so amazing. Pepsi, here's what they, like, Pepsi, Pepsi would just kiss me on the lips, right? Just, just like greeting, kiss me, right? She had the best lips. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, stop, 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 stop. Okay, anyway. So, 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 so a bunch of people. Um, so, when we, we were, because we knew the college, they were trying to destroy the college. This was in, uh, I graduated in 80, 76. So, early 76, we did this, and I was in the, okay, we are Bernard Johnson, who Matthew Bernard Johnson, called, great actor, man, unbelievable, great. I worked for him uh, when I got back to New York uh, as a stage man. Anyway, uh, good guy. 
so a bunch of us got to, uh, uh, got together. Those people I mentioned, uh, we had a we to 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 basically stage a theatrical production, a live theatrical production, protesting thing. It was called a funeral for living. So now we were going to stage a funeral. We were going to give a funeral before that thing died. Okay, so we were planning this stuff like that. We were all the time planning, and I, wherever I was living, I had this really big living room or something like that. So one time we all met there. Okay, I'm talking like you know like like Avery Brooks, uh, uh, Pepsi. Um, uh, Hattie Gossett, I think uh, Utrice was there, uh, uh, not Utrice, uh, uh, Eunice was there, an administrator. It was like if we had administrators, teachers, students would all be working together. Let's put it that way. So we was, we was having a meeting at this place, at my house one time. And my um, uh, girlfriend at the time, uh, she, oh man, she, she's like a genius. <laughs> you know, she's one of those Mensa people like that. But she, okay, she was genius. So we used to have a meeting like that, and she had me to be like, for some, I don't know what was happening. Sometimes, look, I drive people crazy sometimes. We, we, for some reason, she went off. She was having a, a breakdown, something, like that, and she was crying. And we just had, we all sitting around me, and she just came and sat in my lap and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing we ignored her. We just ignored her. Everybody just ignored her. They were going, like, what the heck's going on? So we ignored her, like that, da, 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 da. We had to keep having a meeting, and finally she scurried off. Okay. Here's the thing about this this woman. I met her parents, like both parents, both sides. They're Haitian. So she's this first generation in the, in the country, Haitian or whatever it is. So I look at this as relating to the ADS movement. That here we have black situation. Here you have a, a child of an immigrant interrupting something we were going to do. So I look at this as these you know these immigrants coming on. They interrupting. What, we're, what our mission is, but let's leave that alone. Okay, the next thing, well, when we were going to stage this thing, we, we, we were saying to the, you know, the, we had a great gospel choir, we had a great uh, um, um, jazz department headed by uh, Larry Ridley, and blah, blah, blah. We had a great gospel choir, you know what I mean? It's a wonderful gospel choir, Livingston Gospel Choir. And so we told, we, we trying to get them involved in the in the production. Nah, they wasn't having it. No, we ain't doing it. These are all, Af these are all you know, African Americans, you know? And uh, most of them, Christians, you know? But they didn't want to do it. But this, so think of them as the, the, the all these, uh, uh, I call them neo-Negroes that's trying to stop the ADOS movement. They, um, um, they, uh, 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 they didn't want to do it. But when we put the production on, right, was this a huge production, and, and, and anyway, we put the production on, they showed up. Everybody showed up, the whole campus. It was an amazing performance. It was amazing. This was like, you know, we, we had a had a coffin, da da da. We had this big thing meeting and we went to da 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 da. It was a great production. So look at it like that. Now, one more thing, one more thing, then I'll, I'll move on to the next thing. So, one of the, in, leading up to that, we had a lot of protests, but they were having a meeting with the step with the uh, the, the teachers or the staff, you know, the, the lecturers, uh, and also some of the administrators, I think even, I think it was like a board meeting or something like that, it was in this auditorium, whatever have. So a bunch of us just stormed in, right? And this guy was at the lecture, at, at the, you know, at the lecture, and he was talking to the, whatever their meeting was. And uh, and uh, so he was talking, and, and everybody was protesting, da 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 da. Now, you won't know, well, I'm a theater person, but Sometimes I have I have a good voice at, when I want to and I can project. So I and I was one of the you know people know who I was one of the leaders if you want to put it that way I don't say leader but involved. When I walked in there I said let this I said let the reactionary motherfucker speak. It's weird everything stopped because it flipped everybody's head. The protesters I'm saying let them speak they heard that but I'm calling him a reactionary so they hear that. The, 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 the board of trustees or the, the other uh, lecturers, you know, they stopped. It stopped everything. Everybody stopped. And guess what? Everybody sat down. We let them continue to speak. I say that only because years later, okay, so I'm not really a big, you see my, I'm not really a whatever guy, you know? So what happens is um, uh, 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 years later, I found out, somebody told me that um, this is, Hey, Ms. Scully, have a seat. Hold on a second. I might have to use you in just a All second. Right. Um, so what happens, somebody told me, he said, that guy had said later that a big black guy stopped the thing. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm 5'8", five, 5'8 eight, five, eight whatever it is. I'm whatever, you know what I mean? 
I was like, wow. So it's perception. You see how this perception happens? So they put on to me, what's his terror, this white guy? What's his terror? A big black guy. So me, a little, a medium, you know, a coffee guy, you know, <laughs> becomes a big black guy. Amazing. He's a perception. Okay, so let me leave all that. So so you see what I'm saying? There's, there's, the, the movement will constantly be, you know, co-opted and blah, blah, or trying to be co-opted or whatever. You have to stay on your point. Okay, now. Now let me change, because that's where I think, that's my road to the ADOS and all these things that, that's happening right now. I see these disruptions and what people are doing. But in fact, let me change hats. So my, now Pan-African, right? So I still have my Pan-Africanness. I'm informed by Pan-Africanness. In fact, I told you about uh, Professor James Kanye. I mean, he'll tell you about, he knows all about, you know, Blyden and, you know, all, all those people uh, that started the real uh, Pan-African movement, started in the States and also uh, Pat Moore in, in England, but, you know, still really got his foothold in the States. In fact, if you want to look at it, Booker T, he did a whole, people don't understand Booker T, watch it. He's a Pan-Africanist, you know? Anyway, uh, um, so 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 yes. Look, if you if you if you run into if you at, at uh, I guess he still teaches at Mary Evers College or, or Keene College in New Jersey. As for Professor James Conge, I remind even I think I even talked about it on a, on a video I did. Time. Maybe I'll put the link down there. It's an incredible guy. So let me change for just a second. So I'm gonna take off. Talk about perceptions. Taking off a hat. Taking off my Pan African crown. Put it right there. And as you, some people may or may not know, this is what I call my Ogun hat. Now you say, wait a second, isn't that one of them communist things? Let me put it on the black side now. You're all black, you know. Now what it is, in the pantheon of, of, of you know, if you look at this hat, you know, you say, oh, that's the communist, that's that uh, Che Guevara, that's the communist thing. No argument, that's what you, you see, right? But for me, right, for me, this is the black side. This is the green side here, a little bit of red. That is the North American designation, you know, through the Cuban strain of uh, the the Yoruba uh, cultural uh, thing of um, uh, the Yoruba religion, really Yoruba culture. And you know, when the, when Yoruba went to um, Brazil, it became Candomblé. So this is actually my Ogun hat because Ogun's color is uh, black, green with a little bit of red. So when I put this on, people think of it as revolution or whatever have you. I think of it as just my Ogun crown, you see? So it doesn't matter what other people think and say. I know in my head, I know who I am, I know what it is, and that's, and, and, and Ogun centers me, okay? Okay, I just want to say that just to say it because now we're going to talk about when all this thing gets sorted, it'll get sorted out. The question is, this whole Pan-African thing is really bothering me because somebody started this riff saying that somehow this ADOS is against Pan-African, they're, they're against immigrants, whatever. We're not against anybody. We're firmly in our thing. You the ones are coming at us. Mm -hmm. But here's the here's the trick that I, I just don't understand. The Pan-African, like I said before, to accurately name us uh, a, 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 a DOS, a, a, a American a descendants of child of slavery, right? To accurately name us that, that's our accurate name. But that makes us a, 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 a clan, a tribe within the Pan-African situation. So if you have, I'm, uh, let's go there, I don't know, I'll uh, say the other one. There's an African map here, it's an old one, right? But it's like, now I think there's like 55 African countries. Each one of them, right, supposed to be into their liberation. So if you, if, if, uh, so therefore, say for instance, you're in the States and you're from uh, Cameroon, right? Then you don't try to pimp us. You're supposed to be fighting, like we're, tr we're trying to get out, we're trying to get it straight between our um, land mass, meaning America, you're supposed to be, get it straight with your land mass. If Cameroon has to deal with French and, and the English, but they have to deal with them. This it can't be any clearer. It, you, in other words, I don't. I won't come to uh, say. Um, I don't know. Uh, 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 Gabon, right? And say, you know, you need to do this, or I want something from you. When you're supposed to be going to England, you know, to get to get your your stuff. You, you see what I'm where I'm trying to get at? Okay, you sort of understand that. So there are nice. So I'm saying that. So what? Okay, let me go back. So what are we going to add? What, what? How should the? Uh, how should ADOS deal with uh, the? Um, 
uh, with Pan-Africanism or the African continent and the diaspora. How should we really do talking about after? Well, I'm, I'm jumping. Here's what's happening right now. We have the African Union. It used to be the organization, whatever it was, always whatever that, that thing was when Malcolm was, was, was hanging with them. But now, this is the one that, 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 that Gaddafi wanted to unite all of the, uh, the, the basically autochthonous uh, groups under, you know, under, uh, a, uh, under African Union, including the currency and all the rest of that stuff. And of course, they took that boy out. Okay. But now, the African Union, for years, they've, they've been trying to get a, a thing where, uh, with business people, at least business people, you have a, a visa for all of Africa. So, if you, so, so for instance, if you're, in, uh, if you're in Malawi, you can travel, you know, to Morocco, you know, and don't have to worry about a visa. You know what I mean? You just, you know, you just, just go, you know? So that's what they're working on. And I think they're very, very close to doing that. So if that happens, and there's, there's a visa for Africa, then what, what should happen is ADOS should say, because this is business, remember? ADOS, excuse me, should say, look, African Union, we need, to, we need that same visa thing. So, so, so basically, ADOS, you know, African Americans, black people, well, African Americans, they can also have a visa, a free visa that we don't pay for, because remember, we're all in this together, where I, where I can go any place in Africa with that visa. Because, and this could be all of their diaspora. So, so, so in other words, the, 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 what, the Grenadians, the, the St. Kitts people, the, you know, hey, you can even go far as, as, as the folks from, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Bluefields, Nicaragua, Colón, Panama, you know, Belize, you know, all these people have, uh, even uh, Venezuela and uh, Colombia, they all have good, uh, you know, bl black people, right, and, and, they just, and they can trace that stuff back to Africa. They, they, could, they can all go to Africa and do business all in Africa. So, and since ADOS would get our reparations and a bunch of other stuff, we would, did have some cash to help have, do business in Africa, you see? So, so this opens up an incredible possibility. It's all moving at the same time. This is fascinating to me. Everything is moving at the exact same time. You know, it's a, it's a perfect, a perfect storm. So what I'm suggesting is that all you Pan-Africanists or you, all you individual country, company, uh, countries, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Do it. But you can do it without sniping at somebody, at, 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 at everybody else. You know, because we're, the, remember, we were just one landmass. The people travel like the like like the surround, like So this this tribe here, this planet will move maybe a little bit, a few years there. They they would keep on moving and da da da. This is before the countries were, were carved up. So that's what I needed to say. So I'm slowly. I don't actually need you. You know, <laughs> we'll talk about something else. Um, so anyway, I just want to um, put that on you because I, I'm thinking about. Uh, since everybody's talking in right now, what's happening and fighting each other, whatever, or trying to put out fires and tell people leave us alone, I think we, uh, some of us need to be thinking about where this can go, and, and, and a lot of us have history of where it's been. So I'm really talking. Actually, I'm talking about all all my brothers and sisters who've been struggling in Pan-Africanism, calling African, whatever, for many years before this thing popped up on the radar. Don't get. I know there's a there was a, a movement for reparations. That's something different. But this is something different, right? All, all, stop and think for a second. You can still be a Pan-Africanist. You know, I mean, you know, if 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 you're, you know, if you're in Sierra Leone, right? You can be a Pan-Africanist. You, if you're in England, you could be a Pan-Africanist. But you but you're still a Sierra Leonean, right? Um, I should leave English out because it's colonial. But you know, you're still we're in South, you're still South African. You know, you're, you're still a Malawian. You know, you're still, still Zimbabwe. You're still a Mozambique. You know, you're still Kenyan. You're still you're still uh, 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 Ghanaian. You, you understand? You, you you're still uh, 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 Senegalese. You know what I mean? You're, you're still uh, uh, you understand all all the countries. Um, uh, um, I, uh, even like uh, Djibouti. You know, um, you 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 can still be that and do your struggle. And you know we just want to, we're, we're like a country. We are a country. We're we're a grouping a tribe within this country. But we're still American. That's not, our landmass is America. Even though our roots may be someplace in Africa, you're, you you still identify with Africa. You, you understand? I'm, let me. I'm, I'm belaboring the point. So I better stop because this video is getting too long for me. So that's all I'm saying. So just think about that. Those of us 
the people who want to keep continue to fight in this thing, in sniping and uh, beating off the, the, the naysayers, you do that. The people who are still mad because their 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 movement hasn't had enough enough play, you know, blah blah blah. Well, I'm sorry, you know. And those of us who are thinking where this can go, we really need to think where this can go because remember the conference is happening in October. So perhaps where you think it can go, we should write about that and da 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 and present that at the conference. That's my suggestion. That's a suggestion for me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, speaking from a desk of the ADOS, letting you know what I only suspect. Actually, that's what I know for sure. Yeah, let's go. I'm lazy. Go ahead. Turn that off, please. Thank you so very much. Oh, boy.